Welcome everyone. This is another episode of the more kind of podcast interview style things that I do sometimes. Very informal, very open, friendly chat. Uh, this is Florentin. He's an astral projection coach, master, expert. So yeah, let's just get on, get into it. I just wanted to have like a chat about astral projection and explore kind of how to do it, why you might want to do it, because it's a very different thing, I would say, to lucid dreaming. Similar, but there are some differences and yeah, I think let's just get right into it. Do you want to kind of say, hey, introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. Hi, Florentine here. And I'm excited to be on this podcast and talk about astral projection because a lot of times people think it's the same thing as lucid dreaming and it's different and it's important to kind of talk about the differences and which one is good for what and just clarify some things. Yeah, absolutely. So what are the main differences? Let's start with that. So the main difference is the experience is different and the way you would do it is different. So let's go into the experience. So the experience of a lucid dream is uh, for the most part quite unstable. Like, you know, you can, you know, maybe you're in an environment and you look to your left and you see uh, maybe a window and then you look to the right and you see uh, something else and you look back to the left and a lot of times that window will be now door or you know it just changed or you look at it looks far in the horizon and you're just going to see how the horizon is kind of shifting and moving into different buildings and shifting into graphs and it's it's not a stable place versus an astral projection you would actually visit a real place uh, that is stable because it's it's like a real place like this is a real place this physical reality is a real place and so you would have the lucid dream environment will be like a Kind of like a mental plane we call it like a mental plane where you you're basically the creator of that environment and you're also the explorer of that environment and so it's it's all about what's happening within you that's you're exploring that and that's very useful for many many things but if you wanted to go beyond yourself and travel the multiverse then it's not very useful and then that's when astral projection comes into place and you can then explore actual places which are beyond your own consciousness that's amazing that's so, so fascinating, like the ability to actually do that. Uh, I think this is something kind of the same way I feel about lucid dreaming. I think everyone should at some point get to experience it because it's really quite an amazing thing. So I imagine, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine that similar to lucid dreaming, most like the average person either has never done it or they really struggle to actually do it. Would you Would you agree with that or would you say that everyone has kind of at some point done it. Yeah, I would say it's uh, it's definitely something that most people haven't experienced. It's something that I didn't experience until I started to go to specific workshops and I started learning these things and following the techniques. I had my own experience. But otherwise, if you're not doing any practices, most likely never going to happen to you. It does, however, happen, happen randomly to people throughout their life that they might have an out-of-body experience that for the most part, freaks them out because they don't know what the hell just happened. They just saw themselves lying in bed from a different angle and then pff, they're back. Things like that happens. And I'm jealous because some of these people that have it that easy can actually, you know, become amazing astral projectors because they can get out of the body so easily. But they don't know that. So they just freak out like, oh my God, what was that? But I hope <laughs> that with, with these kind of podcasts, you know, more and more people will learn about what this is and then we'll be able to explore it without being fearful of potentially that they're dying or something like that. But it's actually something that it's very natural to do and it's, it should be something that we should be able to do on a regular basis as a, as a part of our life and not something that's separate to our life. So maybe before we start talking about how specifically to do it maybe we should just cover a little bit more about okay so it's different a different state to lucid dreaming most people have not done it but they could if they learned the right stuff like if they trained practiced did the right exercises so that's also quite similar in terms of lucid dreaming you know it's when you start practicing the exercises that you actually start getting the results i guess like with anything right what would you say are like the biggest benefits or reasons to do it uh, I think one of the biggest ones is that when you get into this space and you start to study these things and you start to learn about this stuff and, and you start to do it yourself and you start to you know spend time with other people that do it as well, like you really get into this world of after projection. What happens is that you become more aware of 
the more expanded version of who you are. And you go beyond this limited version of, hey, I'm just this person with this name in this physical body and this is all I am. You start to get into like, whoa, I am so much more than this human and, and, and we can explore much more than this physical reality. And then you start to get into, you know, what is life? What is the meaning of everything? What, what's going on? Like you, you, you start to think about these bigger questions and you start to explore them for yourself and you start to get answers and you start to expand. And so your consciousness starts to expand. Your perception of reality starts to expand. The way you see yourself and the way you see others, the way you see the planets, you know, nature, everything starts to expand. And you have a, a much wider perspective on how things are. And I think that brings a lot of peace and calmness to one's life. And it also <clears throat> helps you with the understanding of the afterlife and uh, the fact that you're going to continue after physical death that death is not the end. And that's a, that's a major one because for a lot of people having these experiences alleviates them from the fear of dying, which is a big fear that most of us have. Coping with the fact that someone else that has been close to us has died can also be very beneficial, knowing that they are okay, that they continued, but also knowing that there is a practice that you can actually pursue to connect with them again. I think that's some really powerful things that we need to bring into our society more and more so that we can actually transcend the belief systems that we have right now about death, about life, and getting to a much more expanded state where things just makes much more sense. And we're just kind of living in a more kind of a harmonious way with nature and not in this fearful way that we have been for quite some time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Would you say that this is a skill that we, as humans, like it's kind of intrinsically there? because we're in, well, on some level we're supposed to do it it's supposed to be part of our experience maybe like like you say to be more peaceful about death not to fear death not to worry that this is all there is and so like maybe the reason we can astral project as humans is so that we can bring that knowledge back and actually live life you know more full of purpose more full of joy because we realize that this is not the end yeah yeah definitely i definitely think it's about us being able to travel and explore we are explorers you know that's what we do since the moment we we come here we start to explore physical reality we're super curious about everything and it just makes sense that as we evolve we start to explore beyond this dimension as well we start to explore other dimensions mm. and we bring that knowledge back and we start to become a, a multi-dimensional active multi-dimensional being that's actually traveling and exploring and and learning from those explorations and that to me that's very exciting you know we have uh, you have we have elon musk that's trying to go to different planets and explore and and grow in that way and then that's really important right but we can also do this just with our consciousness we can explore and we can expand our our consciousness to other places and learn from those places and bring that back and improve our society here uh and there's so much to learn yeah uh, would I be right in saying that uh, astral projection happens on the fourth dimension or density and that time and space can kind of be bent a little bit more? So you can, for example, astral project from here physically, let's say, to Egypt in just a second or, or in, in no time at all, pretty much. It, would I be right in saying that? Uh, I don't know exactly which dimension it will be on because I think it's going to be on multiple dimensions. Uh, the way I see it is that there are different dimensions and we can travel to the different dimensions with our consciousness. And uh, yeah. some of them can be easier than others and all that. But in terms of speed, yeah, speed is insane. Like you, it's the speed of thought. It's the speed of can, as soon as, as uh, like if you can visualize something, if you can really think about a place, you know, think about Egypt with that one, as soon as you start thinking that thought, you will start to drift away to that place. And it can happen mm -hmm. that, it might be that you just start to feel like you're suddenly, suddenly just are, you just feel like there's a, a lot of speed that's going to, that you're, you're going towards one specific direction and then you're there. It can be like that. Or it can be maybe that you're just simply going through a portal, you know, like a, a door or like a, a portal that opens up that you can go through that just takes you from one place to another. There is no need to think that you need to travel, you know, really a long time from one place to another because the the, the universe is, is quantum right and we know how quantum mechanics works that 
things can just appear and disappear from one place to another instantly. It's like that. It's that's what's happening. We're entering the quantum realms of how things work and things are really strange in that in that world. It's not like here. A lot of times I feel like people are trying to make sense of the astral by by kind of uh, making it align to the rules of the physical reality. So if it behaves differently, then it can't be real. A lot of people say, you know, oh, that can't be real. That must be a dream because that's not how reality works. Well, not not this reality. This physical reality is limited by a lot of things. But when you transcend the limit, the, the, the limitations of physical reality, there's a lot of things that you can do that seems like absolute magic you know if you were to do it here it would just like be like oh that's that, this is magic this is not possible but it is possible in these other dimensions where you you're essentially traveling with your consciousness you're just thinking about just thinking about a place and then be able to to go there and i know that's quite similar with lucid dreaming too and i think there is a lot of parallels between the the similarities between how we navigate and and how some of these experiences are like doors can also be a transition point in lucid dreams right and I think, to me, the way I look at the main differences between lucid dreaming and astral projecting, it's just like different dimensions. So to me, a lucid dream is more like the dimension of the, the mind, the, your own kind of little world. And you can fly there, you can do lots of stuff. And then you can transition from that to an astral projection. And then that will be a slightly different, usually more vivid, more stable, like I was saying before. And a lot of times when we have to project, it's also important that mention that a lot of times we transition from being in a, you know, it might start like a lucid dream, and then we transition away from that. And then we have an out-of-body experience in an, uh, in an astral plane or an etheric plane, which so another dimension. And then we might actually come back to a lucid dream dimension, a mental mm. plane dimension. And so sometimes it can be difficult to to be sure exactly what that was because you go kind of in and out from these different dimensions yeah but it's super interesting yeah one thing i find a little bit confusing with with part of that is the aspect of memory so in a lucid dream or even just a normal dream you can train your brain to kind of remember it the way i understand it is probably very limited compared to your knowledge but the way i understand with astral projection is that you have like a copy of your mind to record your astral memories and when you come back to the body there's an ast you kind of need to like almost download the memories from your astral mind memory to your physical mind memory is that right or can you explain a bit more about that yeah i would say like something like that like you you because you're not having the experience in your mind like a lot of people when they first start with this you know they might think it's all happening in your mind that's the view of the skeptics as well of course but then yeah, when you go beyond that and you start understanding how this stuff works, it's like you have your mind, your memories and everything from this lifetime, everything you're doing. But when you start traveling in the astral, and you have, it's like you access a different part of your consciousness. I, mm. I guess I would say it's like you're, you're accessing, you're traveling with a different part of yourself and it's not the same mind. You can bring, I mean, you bring stuff with you from here. So you're still able to essentially upload the things that you wanted to do. So if you had this idea that you wanted to fly and meet with your spirit guide, for example, which is very common, when you get out of body, you're going to remember that and you're going to be able to pursue that plan. However, there is another part of you that's also being actively controlling that experience. So you might want to, you, you, you might have the plan that you want to get out of the body and you're going to go to your friend's house and verify what he has on his wall to come back and tell him like, hey, you put a number 54 and you have this experiment that to your ego mind, it seems like a really cool thing to do. When you get out of body, suddenly when you think about that, it just feels so insignificant and you decide that you want to fly and see the stars instead, you know? So there's another part of you that's kind of like actively pursuing the, the experience. And then when you come back, now you, you want that part of you to then send that information to this this part of you so it's that is kind of it is kind of like you're saying there's a bit of a download downloading process that needs to take place for some people it's super easy you know they're remembering everything crystal clear like as clear as what they did yesterday you know super clear and for other people it's, it's a bit more work and they have to practice to when they come back just kind of like sit there and just 
remember everything they can, go through everything that just happened and bring in as much emotion to it as possible so that it imprints on the mind all the things that happened. That's actually funny you should say that because I've always thought um, you hear about this experiment. People would say, well, if astral projection is real, why don't you astral project into a room and then read out the number on in a, like a, an envelope or something and then that would prove it. But I think you're right. Like when you actually project, you're using a higher part of your consciousness and the second you're in that space, you know, you're just going to laugh at that. Like you, you, it's almost like you already know everything. You don't need to prove it to yourself or anyone really, because you just, you are that experience. People probably want to experience this for themselves. Where, where should we start with that? Are you ready? Are we ready to move into that part of it? Yeah, we can move into that part of it. And um, I mean, I guess your listeners are, you know, all kinds of people. Some people might want to do this for fun to explore. Other people might have some other ideas about what to do with it. I think what I've seen more and more is that one of the probably the most useful cases for people has been to connect with deceased loved ones, to be mm -hmm. able to connect with someone that they've lost, you know, see them again, and not just see them, but like to hold them again and smell them and feel them, because that's how real this stuff is. A lot of times, people think when I talk about astral projection, they think, oh, it's like imagination, like you're. You're meditating and you're like seeing images in your mind and it's like imagination no it's like so completely different what imagination is you're actually you're moving away from where you're lying in the bed you're sep you're separating from the physical body you know you're going to another place and when you're there you're completely immersed in that place in the same way that we are immersed in this room right now like if you look to the left you'll see something look to the right you see something else will to touch things, smell things, taste things, put your hand through a wall if you wanted to, uh, fly, like it's 100% real. There's no, there's no, you're not able to imagine that kind of detail and that kind of level of realism. And so that's important to, to mention. And so when you have an experience, you know, if you have an experience of meeting with your loved one, the experience will not be like an imaginary thing in your mind. They're just kind of like imagine seeing them. No, you will actually be able to speak to them and touch them and, and hold them again, which is so profound for a lot of people that have this experience, you know, it really, really helps them to, to cope with the grieving process because they're not able mm -hmm. to see that this person still exists. They're out there. They're not just gone. They're okay. And you can connect with them again and you can have closure. And that means a lot to people, you know, that's, that's a really, really important thing. And I think that's something that we also should know how to do in our society because let's face it everyone's going to die at some point and the people we love is going to also die at some point that's just a fact it's not like maybe no it's going to happen so how prepared are we for that in our society today not so much but what if we had asked projection as a tool to do this and it was you know common knowledge then this whole process will be completely transformed it won't be the same when someone leaves it won't be like oh my god my, my world is over but I think mm -hmm. a lot of these fears come from a lot of the movies we see today, you know, in every movie, in every series, in every piece of content, when someone dies, it's like the worst thing that could possibly happen to them. It's like the saddest moment. Everyone is crying. It's terrible. So, of course, we've been conditioned this since we're very young. So that's why we react so bad when someone dies, because it's just so, so bad. And mm -hmm. I would like to just kind of transform that, um, change that and make, give people more peace when when this happened more understanding of what is actually happening and so going into how to do this there are multiple uh, techniques in my program we teach the three main techniques because we realize that people are different and so it would be cool to just have like this one method like do this one thing tonight and it, you're gonna get out of body guaranteed but unfortunately people are different and so we have to experiments with these different methods with each person to see you know which one is uh, going to work better for or for you uh, based on you know how you're sleeping based on how your your mind works based on how your days are you know you are you working all the time like what what is going on with each person it needs to be analyzed and then experimented with different methods and so the three methods are uh, the first one is through lucid dreaming so learning lucid dreaming is actually very helpful for getting uh, out of body as well. And so if you're 
a lucid dreamer, you can actually have astral projections quite easily because all you have to do is become lucid in the dream. And when you are lucid in a dream, you can command the dream uh, to turn into an out-of-body experience. You know, you can say things like out-of-body now. So it's kind of like using command and intention to be able to shift away from the lucid dream dimension, the mental plane, to an astral plane or an etheric plane. You do that with commands, or you can do that with walking through uh, a portal, you know, a door, or behind a bush or something, and make that intention that when you go beyond that bush or portal, you're going to be in your room where you are uh, mm. practicing, or you're going to be somewhere else. That kind of stuff can work. Or, for example, if you were to say, you know, out of body now, then what can happen is that the environment you were in before would just start to dissolve, and suddenly you find yourself in your house, for example. This is one of the techniques. And now that works for some people. They're able to have lucid dreams. But what if you're not able to have lucid dreams? What, are you, what if you're one of those persons that have a hard time dreaming? And you just kind of, when you sleep, you sleep and that's it. Then there is another method, which is called the semi-indirect method. And this is basically something that you do upon awakening from sleep. You know, I've designed the special soundtracks that basically you go to sleep and the soundtrack wakes you up. And upon awakening from sleep, those few seconds when you regain consciousness, if you remain still and you're not like moving or anything, and you just remain still and you remain calm, you can remain in that sort of sleepy in between dream state. And at that point, you can do specific techniques that will then take you out of body. And this one is really effective for a lot of people because it's you know everyone can sleep and everyone can wake up it's just a matter of remaining calm in this phase so that you don't get like scared and sometimes people get scared when the soundtrack comes on my voice wakes them up but you know that that goes away after a few after a few attempts because you become used to the the prompts that wakes you up and then you can just perform the uh the exit technique or whatever technique you need to perform to to start to wiggle yourself out of body, for example. And so you can go from sleeping and to going out of body within just a few seconds. And then you have multiple tries throughout the night because the soundtrack goes on and on and on. So in case you missed on the first go, you will be able to do it again the next 15 minutes. We'll come back again. It'll you know, help you uh, to remember what to do. Then after this technique, there is the direct method, which is probably the one that most people are familiar with when it comes to astral projection, is the technique that goes through deep meditation. And so you're essentially meditating yourself into a very, very deep state, a state where you're completely relaxed, completely surrendered. There's no tension anywhere in, in your body, and you are still able to keep yourself awake enough to observe for non-physical sounds or non-physical sensations that might take place, like vibrations. And then you can perform an exit technique to get out of body from there. And this technique, you know, this, this method is powerful for some people because, you know, some people are maybe they're deep sleepers. So the, the semi-indirect method might be difficult because they're just not able to wake up and like remember what to do and they're really confused. So then this method can be much better for them because they're able to keep themselves somewhat more uh, awake in this state. So these are the three methods. And so we experiment with all of these three methods throughout the program to find out which one is the, the, the right one for you and which one you should focus on for the rest of the time. And then you just perfect yourself as you're going through this process of trial and error, essentially. And we use the scientific mm -hmm. method to just kind of figure out how you have to perform this method to to make it work each time because we want it we want you to be able to have a high success rate so it shouldn't supposed to be like something that just works you know once in a, in a month that's not good enough it's supposed to be something that works all the time because we want you to use it as a tool you know if imagine if you had a computer and it only worked sometimes that wouldn't be very useful <laughs> you know so it's it's all about yeah. like really fine-tuning the practice the point where you can actually do it at will and do you find that it can be that predictable when you find the technique that works the best for you, let's say, can it literally be that predictable where you just, you run the technique and it works? Yes. 
that's the cool thing about it. Like once you've figured out all the small details, you know, what time you have to go to sleep, when you have to wake up, uh, which position you have to be in, which soundtrack, which exit technique, like there's all of these things. And once you've figured all of them out, you can get this very defined, what I call projection blueprint. And then mm. you just follow that and it works most times. Like you can get up to 100% success rate. We have students that, that do that. Maybe we're more realistic, you know, because life happens, you know, and you don't, you're not going to sleep the same every night. You're not going to eat the same every night. You're not going to feel the same every night. You know, your physical life is going to have a big impact. If you're stressed about work for some, some reasons, you'll be more tense. So there'll be other factors that will affect your practice. So, you know, you might get up to 70%, 75%, 80%, 90% accuracy. And that's, that's really, really good. So if somebody was, let's say they found the technique that works for them, and they found the right exit technique and they've got they've perfected it all like this what sort of goals should they set with it like should they have a goal even or should they just experience it and just see what happens oh, that's a great question it's not going to be super easy uh, you know like a walk in the park or something it's going to take time it's going to take dedication discipline and if you don't have a mm-hmm. strong why you're going to most likely give up very quickly so it's very important to have a reason why you're actually doing this. Is it because you want to connect with the loved one? That's a strong reason. Is it that you want to find answers to, to your life, to your existence, to, you know, where do you come from? What are you? Where do you go after this life? Like, is it like, are you a truth seeker? Then that can be a very strong uh, reason as well. Is it just for fun? Because you're, you're, you want to explore for fun and see how it is. That's probably not a strong enough reason to, to, to go to get any, you know, to get far with this. But if you have a strong reason, then you will be able to put in the work, consistent practice on a regular basis. And then you will have different goals when you get a body, which is good to set. It's good to have an intention like, okay, this in this practice, I want to have this experience, maybe just be able to visit my neighborhood, you know, just get a body in my room and see my living room. That's a really cool one, you know, like just be Mm -hmm. in your own environment that you're familiar with and uh you know see how it feels to put your hand through the wall and feel the inside of the wall the texture the the small debris and take it out again like whoa that was cool or go inside of a mirror and see how that feels just teleporting through a mirror or you know flying or like there's all this cool stuff that you can do i think setting these kind of goals are good and the goals should excite you it should be something that like ooh, can't wait to have that experience should be, shouldn't be something mundane because then if it's mundane it, uh, your subconscious doesn't care about that so it's not going to help you with that if it's something yeah. that you're like whoa i really want to do that and there's an emotional connection to that it's much more likely that it's going to happen and um yeah i think it's good to take just baby steps you know like just do a few easy things first like just get a body first just be able to get through that phase of feeling the vibrations, like a lot of times people get to the state of feeling vibrations in their body. And just being able to be calm in that state can be a goal. The next step can be, okay, now that I'm calm in that state, I want to be able to exit from this. Hmm. And then I want to be able to stay out for at least one minute or something like that. Like these steps are important. And I think a lot of times people put too much pressure on themselves. Like, okay, I'm going to go to body this week and I'm going to see um, you know, this guy that I'm going to go to healing temple. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, come on, like just take it slow. Like this is something that's completely new. Uh, let's start <laughs> with something more realistic, you know, like s- yeah. small steps. Okay. So I have a question. Maybe people are think, uh, hearing this and they're thinking, it sounds amazing. I want to do it. It sounds achievable. I just got to find the right technique for me. What would you say about dangers or risks things like i've heard things being mentioned like entities you know being trapped or attacked by things in the astral realm if you're a beginner can you speak a bit more on that because i think that's that's a really important one because a lot of people have these fears and these thoughts and so we need to shine light on this you know how uh, how dangerous is it are you getting yourself into something that can potentially ruin your life or you know like there's all kinds of fears out there and um it's interesting it's really interesting when when i started this i have i heard nothing about these dark things you know i heard nothing about you know entities uh, dark entities shadow figures none of this stuff like there was there wasn't a thing in the lectures that i went it was all like 
beautiful and amazing. You know? And so when I started astral projecting, I had literally all my experiences were po very positive. There was, there was no, there's nothing negative at all in none of them. Uh, some of them I, were a bit boring. Maybe I'll just end up on a street and there was nothing happening. It was like empty, but there was no scary stuff, you know. As soon as I started to consume more negative information from online places and watching negative movies like, you know, Insidious and these things, I started to have more creepy experiences taking place. It, and it comes and goes like it's it's almost like the the things that are on, on that are on your subconscious mind are going to come up in your experiences. Are there something to worry about? Well, in my experience, no. Like the way I like to think about it is that when you are in the astral, your consciousness traveling around like a point of consciousness just moving around. For the most part, we don't even have a body. You know, it's only when we look down and we expect seeing hands in the body that we start to, uh, you know, grow out a body, and now we have a body. But for the most part, we're just like a point of awareness, and we're just traveling around, and we are indestructible. Nothing can really happen to us. No one can hurt us. And so, the 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 only thing that can really happen is that you might end up in a lower astral plane, you know, like these darker places. And that's the thing, there is light and dark there too, just like we have light and dark on Earth in, you know, in this physical dimension. There's going to be light and dark in the astral in these dimensions too. And of course, there are like really light dimensions where you know, everything is like amazing, very beautiful, very full of love. But then there's going to be dimensions where there's a lot of fear, a lot of uh, scary stuff too. And so you might suddenly appear in one of these lower places and it's not maybe so pleasant. You don't like what you see there. You don't like the people there, just environment. Just everything is very, very heavy. Well, you can just simply return back to your body if you don't like it. That's a cool thing. Like mm. as soon as you don't like something, or you can, you can just teleport somewhere else, you know, because all you have to do is just change the way you feel and, and focus on where you actually want to be instead of where you ended up. Or if you just really don't like a situation, you can simply just think about your, your, your body or think about your bedroom and boom, you're back. And you're safe and sound in your bed, in your pajamas, and everything is fine. And mm. to me, that's, a, that's super cool because like imagine if you were, when, when you are in a place that you don't want to be in the physical, you know, you're in a dark alley, someone's running after you, trying to rob you or something, and you can't just think about your bedroom and come back. It doesn't work, you know. You have to fight with that person or run or hide and you might potentially get hurt physically or even, you know, they might even kill you or something. Like something bad can happen. So I like to see it like if we are very fragile in the physical state and this is a much tougher environment for us to be in, in this physical body, in this physical place, than we are when we're in the astral and we're having these experiences. So for those mm -hmm. people that are afraid of, you know, going to this astral places, they should just think about how brave they are to be in the physical in the first place and understand <laughs> that this is a much tougher environment to be in. And we chose to be here. And that's also interesting that, you know, we chose to come here and have this human experience, even though we knew that crazy things might happen, you know, people, you know, there's wars, people get uh, raped, there's all kinds of horrible things that could happen to you in the physical form. But we still chose to come down here and have this human experience because of the amazing things that can happen and, and uh, all the positive things that you can experience as well. And I think it's the same with astral projection. Yes, you can end up in some dark places and see some weird things, but there's so many more amazing things that you can do that you don't have to like focus in on all the fearful stuff and worry about that. And just, it's just better just focus on all the amazing stuff that you can do. And what happens is when you start to have these out of body experiences, you know, you might have some initial fears in the beginning, but as you start having them, and you start coming back each time to your body and you notice how easy it is. Actually, it's hard to stay out of body. That's the main problem that you're struggling with. That, oh my God, I wanted to stay out longer, but I got sucked back. So when you start having these experiences and you start seeing how easy it is to come back and how fun it is to be out of body and how safe everything is, then you, your fear starts to go down you know, lower and lower and lower. And you start to get away from that fearful mindset that you might have had. And that's really important. It's really important to let go of the, the fearful filters that we might have put on the practice. And really, when exploring, you want to be in a very open, open mind and just 
see what it is that's going on there. Kind of be curious instead of going into fear as the first thing. Like, oh my God, I don't know what that is. There's a light there. It's creepy. I'm going to run back to my body. Like, no, just mm. kind of stay calm and explore. What is that thing? And if you want, I can share a, little, a short story about a friend of mine who uh, had a, a very tr- interesting experience where he he was out of body and he was traveling in, around his flat and he ended up in the kitchen. And in the kitchen corner, he saw this dark figure in the corner. And this is the moment where you have to be open-minded. He saw a dark figure in the corner. So for, for a lot of people, when they see that, they'll probably freak out and think, oh my God, there's a demon in my in my kitchen, you know, they'll come back to the body, scared, sweating. The next day they're selling the house, they're moving because their house is haunted and whatnot. Like a lot of things that they project onto that experience. Now in this, in his case, he wasn't thinking like that. He was more like, hmm, there's a dark looking figure in the corner. Let me see what this is. Let me get closer. So as he got closer, the darkness was kind of fading away and he was able to see clearly because the darkness, darkness was just like absent of light or something. And then as he got closer and closer, he could see that, ah, this was actually his son having an out-of-body experience. The son was sleeping in the other room, having an out-of-body experience, not knowing, you know, because this happens to us all the time when we sleep. We have these out-of-body experiences, we don't remember them. His son was just out-of-body, and he was now able to see his son and communicate with his son and have a beautiful experience. So when he came out of body, uh, came back to his body and he was telling this story to people, he was sharing this story as this beautiful thing that happened. He met his son out of body and it was amazing. Now, unfortunately, his son didn't remember any of that. So there was no, he wasn't able to confirm that with his son in that way. But for him, it was amazing. It was beautiful. But he could have come out from that experience thinking, oh my God, it was terrible. There was a demon in my kitchen. So the only difference was the mindset, you know, the way we perceive things. And that's the thing, you know, we got, we might have the same experiences when we go out of body, but the way that we interpret them is going to be different based on our belief systems and our fears and all that kind of stuff. So it's very important to let go of limiting beliefs and just kind of look at things from an open mindset. That's a really cool story. And I think that highlights the, like how important it is to think about how we perceive things. Because, yeah, you're right. Like two people can have exactly the same experience, same factors, same stimuli or whatever, and they'll have completely different conclusions. Or like, yeah, like you say, one of them might freak out, sell the house, be scared of astral projection, tell everyone they meet that it's terrible. And the other person was just, you know, had a cool experience and now he's going to do more and there's no, no problem. You know, it's just like, that's his perception. So, yeah. Yeah. I think and another important. thing I wanted to add to this actually is that a lot of these negative experiences that you can read online that people share, they always happen in sleep paralysis. I don't know, 90% of the time or more. Every time you hear people talk about like, oh my God, there was like entities in my room. They're trying to attack me and they're like demons. And I mean, there's all kinds of scary stuff. It always happens. Like if you read closely and or you, if you ask the person more, it's not that they went out of body and they saw these things out of body somewhere. It's that they're in their room and they're suddenly in this sleep paralysis, which is for those that don't know, it's a state where you are essentially, your, your body is asleep and it is, it's a natural thing that the body does to go into sleep paralysis so that you don't act out your dreams when you're dreaming. What isn't natural is to come back and be uh, awake, like your mind is awake. However, your, your body is completely paralyzed. That's not as common, but it happens to a lot of people. So it is, I guess, common in that way. And when that happens, what happens is your subconscious mind is you know, very quick with drawing conclusions and projecting ideas onto the situation. So... So in that state, you know, you cannot move and also breathing can be difficult. So then immediately, you know, you draw conclusions that, okay, someone or something is holding me down. You start to panic, you start to feel afraid and you have a hard time breathing. So then you think, oh, someone or something is holding my chest or, or strangling me or, and then immediately when you start feeling those things, you start to then of course start seeing things because you start to project things into your room. So you're projecting your fears all around the room. And depending on what your fear fears are, and it can also be subconscious fears, you know, you might see demons if you're someone that comes from the Christian religion. You must you might see jinns if you come from the Muslim religion, or you might see some bad bad aliens if you if you're like into that, or whatever it is that you've been consuming that's been fearful, you know, that's stored in your subconscious. That stuff might come up. It might be big spiders, you know, 
And that's because you're in sleep paralysis and you're freaking out because you cannot move. The good news is though, that even if you are in sleep paralysis, you can make these things disappear simply by knowing that they're not real. They're just projections of your subconscious and just staying calm and, you know, wiggle your, to your toes, uh, move your tongue around to get out of that state. It's one of the techniques to just get out of that state. So most of the scary stuff that you would read online will always come from this state and not yeah. from the past projection state, which is a much more rare uh, ability or state that people uh, normally haven't experienced. But they confuse them to a lot. Like I hear that a lot of times, like, oh, yeah, I had enough projection. Did you? Like, let's, let's be real. <laughs> you know, it's different. And I think that's another thing to talk about. It's like people always like to put things in boxes and kind of black and white things, you know. Oh, it's either this or it's either that. But the thing is, consciousness is, is so many more things than black and white. And all of these experiences can, can, can uh, behave and um, experience uh, differently. You know, you can have apps projections that are very blue and kind of a little bit blurry. You can have them that are like 360 degree vision and you can see everything super clear and vivid. And there's all kinds of ways to perceive uh, these states. It's not just like one or the other. Yeah, I think, and the same, I think, goes for lucid dreaming in some way. Like, there's so many different experiences you can have that you can't just put it in a box and say that's either a lucid dream or it's not a lucid dream because it's yeah. kind of almost like on a spectrum or a scale. It's on a spectrum. Yeah. And especially when, like you say, like a lucid dream can lead into an astral projection experience and then back into a lucid dream and then back into like deep meditation, or they can kind of oscillate between these different states yeah. or places, can't they? Let's say if somebody has just, I don't know, five minutes a day, like they, they only have five minutes a day spare. They're super busy. They have like 10 jobs or something. What, mm. what would you say they could do to build the skills or to make astral projection more likely? Find a way to uh, extend those five minutes to a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might say something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there isn't. At, at this point, there isn't like a, you know, a button that you can press that can just like, boom, get you out, get you out of body. Yeah. I'm working on it. You know, it would be nice to have some sort of cool tech app that you can just get you out of body. But for the most part, at, at this point, you know, you need to dedicate at least an hour to the practice so that you can yeah. really calm yourself into that state. But I think if you really didn't have time to practice and you just want to kind of do it on the fly, then maybe the lucid dream method will be a way because that's something you can do on the fly. And then before going to sleep, you can set the intention to have an experience and then it, it might happen. But the thing is with mm -hmm. this one is that you're leaving it up to a lot of uh, hope. There is, you're not going to have as much control over the the, the, the ex, the, the experience, the, the fact that it's going to happen because you're going to rely a lot on having the lucid dream, but this can be something that you could do and you could, you could build it up over over some time where you, you just be consistent with your reality checks and all the lucid dreaming techniques that you that you uh, that you would do and then over time it will start to appear in your life but but yeah i mean it's still to me like this is something that the, it works like this like it's not your conscious mind that is that takes you out of body it's your subconscious mind your conscious mind is very much you know it's it has the idea like i want to do this like cool but if you don't imprint this in your subconscious and make it really important, your subconscious is not going to prioritize having these experiences. Like if you're working all the time and you're focusing a lot on work and there's so much happening in your life, it's just, it's a mess, you know, like you're busy with so many things, your subconscious can be very occupied with all of those things. So mm. then at night it's like, Hmm, Oh yeah. Out of body. Just before going to sleep. Like, Oh yeah. I remember I, I, wanted, I wanted to have an out of body experience. I'm just going to like, yeah, I want to have an out of body experience. And then you go to sleep with that intention. You know, chances are it's not going to happen because you've been focusing on so many other things that your subconscious is focused on and it's immersed in. But if you can have, I would say, if you have a very strong desire, a very strong will, it's a powerful emotion attached to it, then it could easily, uh, then it can happen much easier because your subconscious resonates with emotions. If you, it doesn't resonate with, with logical thinking. If you say, oh, I want to go and see these numbers in my friend's place because they're cool. My friends are going to think I'm cool about that or I want to whatever. That's not going to, your subconscious mind is not going to care about that. But if it's like, oh my God, like there's a heartfelt intention that I want to connect with my loved one that passed away. 
that's a very different emotion. And that's a very mm. powerful emotion that can actually help you to have a, another body experience that night. Yeah, maybe it's the wrong mindset to, to think, how can I do it in three minutes right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but um, my guess is like the people listening who want to do it, well, if they're still listening by this point, let's assume they want to do it. They probably would find the time to really give it a shot. So yeah, yeah. I think I think that's that's good. I think the the way to look at it, which is the way that I also tell my students to look at it, is it's not about like getting out of body as soon as possible. Like there's like this mm. goal, and I have to do it, and I'm going to do it now. And a lot of times that can really uh, stop you from having the experience because you put a lot of pressure on yourself, and you cannot do this practice with pressure. So instead of going that route, which never works, by the way, mm. it's better to go the other route, which is um, to fall in love with the journey, with the practice, to enjoy doing the meditation. Because, I mean, the meditation itself, if you're doing the direct method, for example, it's a very, very pleasant experience. You know, you're getting into a very deep, relaxed state that you've probably never, ever been at uh, before. And just falling in love with the practice, just enjoying going about having these experiences or having the meditation or just enjoying the process of doing this practice before we kind of wrap this up and send people to, I think you mentioned there was like a free training or something like a free workshop. Is that yeah, where, I didn't mention it. We yeah, there is a free workshop, uh, a free training that I have on, on the website that explains all of these different things and really sheds a lot of light on it and uh, helps people that are complete beginners to understand more and also have, helps people that are more advanced to also get deeper. Um, yeah, exactly. So I think that would be really useful for p people who want to kind of learn more, right? Just to dive in, have the first experience and just see what it's all about. Yeah. So, I mean, the link will be down below this video, right? There'll be a link, take them yeah. to your website. They can watch the, the video. It's about 29 minutes long. Has a lot of visual effects, a lot of cool graphics that I've been creating myself with my own hands because my, my background used to be a visual effects artist. So there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So you, you guys will probably really enjoy watching it it's gonna be fun nice yeah the link as he said will be directly below the video probably in the pinned comment as well and uh yeah so before we kind of wrap this up is there anything advice tips things stories things you want to share i would just say that you know if you're someone that you're still watching this then you are you're someone that for sure has a there's a calling there's a seed within you that's like there's something within you that's kind of like just calling you to do this. You don't know what it is, but there's something there. I would say follow that because I see that with so many of our students, you know, they, they have this, they, they have this, there's something, they don't know what it is. They're just drawn to this. There's something within us. And I think it's built in. It's almost like part of our DNA to explore beyond. I think, you know, we are here, you know, we, we, we wake up here as, as, a, as a baby, like, whoa, we don't have not, we have no understanding of what's going on. We think our parents do, and then we wake up realizing that they don't know either. And it's a very, it's a very natural journey to go on to, to ask questions and to find out what is this reality we're in. And ask rejection is one of those practices that is key to going further on that journey and finding out these things. And it's not about listening to what I say or what any other person says is real or it's not real. It's really about having your own experience. It's about you learning these techniques so you can go out there and have your own personal experiences. That's how we learn. That's how we can grow. That's how we can really expand our consciousness is through own personal experiences. No matter what somebody else has experienced, it doesn't help us. It doesn't like, oh my God, now I've changed. Now, I've, you know, it doesn't. It's about having your own experience. That's why we come here and have a human experience. You know, we could have just have another soul tell us how it is to, to be human. But that wouldn't be anything because it's not how we understand and learn things. It's through experience. If you're called to this, like really follow that calling and really pursue this journey because I think you're, you're meant to go on this journey. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, thank you so much again for coming on and talking to, uh, to me and to the listeners. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really great to have you on. I'm sure we'll do another episode and dive a little bit deeper but. Didn't want to overwhelm everybody in the first one. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, yeah. if they have some questions, you know, they can maybe post some of the questions below, and we we could do another video like this if they have some specific things that they want to know. If we see like okay, a lot of people they seem to want to know more about this area, 
you know, we can do another video and talk about that. I'm, I'm totally open to that because this has been fun and I, I want to share more of this with people because I think this is something that not enough people know about. Uh, you know, people still think you're crazy when you talk about these things, even though there's so much uh, evidence, you know, that's come out. And, you know, it's, I mean, I, when I started this, I was a skeptic myself. That's the thing. I used to, I, I didn't believe this was, you know, a thing. I thought maybe they're imagining things, these people. A bit crazy. And it's only when you have your first experiences that that shifts, you know. And so, of course, I know that for a lot of people, it's hard for them to like shift like this just because I'm talking about it. But hmm. when they have their own experiences, that's when the shift takes place. And I think it's a very empowering shift to have, knowing that you're so much more than this physical body and that you will continue after physical death. I think that's a, it's a major upgrade in your view upon yourself and upon life that I think everyone should have. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Well, yeah, so the link's down below. Go and check out the uh, training video. And yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing experience. Yeah, enjoy. So yeah, thanks once again. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you.